Amanda Tapping, decked out in hell as Helen Magnus. Hello. Hello. And my 100th solo interview. Rockstar! Awesome, congratulations. Right. So you want to switch? You want to interview me? I do. How do you feel? <laughs> Who's been your favorite interview so far? What's the weirdest question you've ever asked? What's um, the weirdest answer you've ever got? <laughs> well, I'd be good, and that's totally on the fly. Oh, Imagine geez. if I thought about it. Was number one with Amanda too? Number two was Amanda. Number two was Amanda. Who's number, number one, one was Jacqueline Samuda. Uh oh, I love so, her. I do too. It was text though, so but it still counts. It still counts. So one hundred. So for you. thank you. I'm thrilled. I'm honored to be your one hundred. <laughs> so how are things? Awesome. We are uh, in our second week of shooting, season two, O Sanctuary, and uh, we've just come back into the studio. We were on location for the first week. It's uh, we're here. It's good. Okay. It's it's been a long, hard road to get this show going. We don't, you know, we don't have the backing of a major studio. And um, financing is always an issue, and trying mm -hmm. to get it, and it's it's uh, it's been a real education. Mm -hmm. In some ways, it's you know the fact that it's been so difficult, and the fact that we've been through so much crap to get here, mm -hmm. has made the experience that much sweeter now that we're here. Um, and certainly, it's made Damien and and Martin's and my relationship that much more solid. Mm -hmm. You know, like I mean, we literally feel like we've been through a war together, but. Um, it's, uh, it's good. Yeah, we're here. It's good. Wow. It's awesome. It's awesome. We're here. It's, it's great for you guys. I mean, yeah. um, is it okay? And the show, the show is, is doing well. I think we're now in 50 countries around the world. 50? Yeah. We, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, we're like getting amazing ratings on ITV in Britain and amazing ratings on Sci-Fi and CTV in Canada, which is uh, a network as opposed to our, our cable station, mm -hmm. TMN, that had us before. CTV is now... Um, taken on the mm -hmm. show, so we'll be on the Space Network, network, which means everyone in Canada can watch it, which is great for us because the part of the yeah. the bummer is that we're shooting in our own country, 100% Canadian Canadians, show. And Canadians don't get to see it. I know. Yeah, Isn't so it's amazing? cool. Yeah, and we're wow. like I said, 50 countries. So that's a step. Pretty I, I stoked. Would be honest with you, I I anticipated that the show would be obviously picked up in a second season and be yeah. and, and be successful. I did not anticipate that the show would be this successful. Has that blown you away? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, it's de redefined my definition of success. Really? We are, uh, in many ways, uh, but numbers-wise, we're a good success. Financially, we're far from being a success. Right. Uh, that's okay. I mean, the fact that it, it, with the television series, it takes a few years to get your momentum. And, you're uh, coming in every morning, and Olivia's being fed, and the, I mean, your bases are covered there. We all have there, jobs. So. <laughs> you know, the fact that, that we were able to turn to our crew and invite them back uh, much later than we'd hoped. Mm -hmm. Once again, we were under the gun trying to get the money together. Um, but the fact that we were able to make those phone calls, yeah. happiest days for us. Wow. I was literally going, we have a green light. So there, you was start Monday. there was a concern for a while there. For, for sure, for there always is. I mean, the thing is, is that even though we were picked up mm -hmm. around the world, we, mm -hmm. we still needed the money to make the show. Okay, so no studio backing means no means, money coming in. It means right. you have to find somebody to finance that gap. Private investors? Yeah. So that's how it's working. Good yeah. for you guys. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that you could do that. <laughs> well, I, don't, I, I think, too, with the financial crisis hitting, yeah. um, Season two was like, <laughs> so it, you know, it, it and it, yeah, I mean, season too. one, we put a lot of our own money into it. So, yeah, um, yeah of course it did. Of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, the people that were financing us last year went, we don't know if we can. And it just yeah. became this whole, and they ended up helping in, in Gap and Banks mm -hmm. and la la la. You hit, I'm sure you sit, as an executive producer, you sit in on all the story meetings. Yeah. Has it been difficult to tell the kinds of stories that you want to tell? I mean, it's obviously an intensely visual effects heavy show. Yeah. You know, you guys do landscapes great yeah. and backgrounds great. What I'm looking for is, let's see, the animals of sanctuary and you the will. people of sanctuary oh, you will. fight to defend themselves as as a group. You know, you are, are we approaching things like that? That's exactly what's happening. Great. Yeah. I was You're thinking that watching the finale, more. I was like, man, they have to mobilize. Absolutely. Um, this season already, I mean, Martin uh, just came from the edit suite and was so stoked about what's going on. Uh -huh. um, and that the show is looking better than it did last year, and we were really proud of what we were able to put together last year. But definitely, we're, you're going to see a lot more creatures this year. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a lot more of the, the denizens of the sanctuary, and you're yeah. going to see a lot more of the team, you know, mm -hmm. 
all of the character stuff that you expect to start to happen in season two. Yeah. Season one was a lot of information mm -hmm. um, and a lot of introducing of characters and of story arcs. And season two is, uh, yeah, it's going to blow up. It's great. Wow. Yeah. Cool. We're very excited. The stories are huge this year. You're ex you've expanded your writing staff. Alan McCullough yeah. is in here. Yeah. It's nice to have him over. It's lovely to have him over. So. He's a great guy. And we've got Sarah Cooper here and James Thorpe. Okay. Um, yeah. We've got some, and we've, like, I mean, this is sci-fi pedigree, mm -hmm. you know? Sarah Cooper's been writing sci-fi for a long time, and, mm -hmm. and Alan we love, so it's, yeah, it's... Oh, yeah, he's definitely proven himself on, on Atlantis, so yeah. no problem there. Yeah. Where do you want this character to go this year? We kind of established who she was last year, you know, her, her yeah, background, yeah. why she's immortal, What's interesting like is, that. I'm not even going to be brutally honest about it, but when we shot the webisodes, there was a dark, mysterious kind of edge to Magnus. When we brought the show to TV, for a lot of different reasons, network concerns, and yeah, network we had a big hand in that. Yeah. Had a big hand, and and you know, rightly so. Um, I felt in some ways like we homogenized Helen a bit, and and in some ways the pilot. Um, and I think the, the sort of darker, more mysterious elements are sexier and more interesting. Mm -hmm. and there's roads that we can travel down. I didn't want her to be so. Mary Poppins, as a terror, <laughs> you know. I wanted to see, so we, uh, by nature of the stories, and and by nature, it, the stories are really dictating what's happening to her. Uh -huh. But we're going to see a much darker edge to her. Okay. Um, Requiem proved that the character could still go completely black and be interesting, and redeem herself. Mm -hmm. And so I think that proved to the network that there was more to play with with this character, that she didn't have to be so trying to please everybody. What about humor, Amanda? I remember, I, I'll never forget the quote that you said for, for Sam. When do I get to be funny? When Sam's I not funny, be... damn her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what about the humor aspect of, of Magnus? You know, she's, she's, I'll be brutally honest with you, I think she's very serious. And the the the, upgrade, the, the well, life that she has had yeah. does speak to that. So I'm not saying that There's she needs There's a gravitas to... to her that comes from the fact that she's as old as she is. Yeah. There's a weight to that. There's a loneliness to mm -hmm. that. There's there's a swing at the bottom of this character that that really... Uh, you see her lighten up. And once she becomes more comfortable with Will, you'll see her mm -hmm. sense of humor. You'll see cheekiness from her. You see it with Ashley. You see, you'll see it with Bigfoot. You see it with Henry. There's... She, her humor is so sophisticated and and and, and in some ways unsophisticated because she's very cheeky and yeah. about it. But I think it, right now she's not that funny. There's a mm -hmm. lot of stuff going on for her, mm -hmm. and I don't think that the humor is as important right now. Okay. You'll see elements of her warmth. Yeah. But I I don't think at this point it's important for her to be that funny. Right. I think the darker edge on her. Which will, you know, when you balance that out with some humor, actually makes the humor more poignant because you've mm -hmm. seen her like, whoa. Mm -hmm. I want to, uh, while this is on my brain, I want to ask this. When, how can we see Stuck? I've always wanted to see Stuck. Well, the, I, I, this, I've always wanted you to ask what, you You know what, they've shown it, I think. At, uh, I think that last time I did a GateCon, fans really? had copies of it. Yeah. Okay. Cause it's not, you know, it was a lovely project. It was a lovely experience as an actor. It was a really cool thing to do. I, we didn't have the money. We didn't have the production. We didn't, you know, we, we certainly we were able to use sets that we shouldn't have been able to use because we had a great producer who got us uh -huh. onto places and, and we, uh, you know, we had a great cast and uh -huh. um, the director had a really cool idea of how he wanted to do things. I think when it all came together, it wasn't quite the wildly crazy indie mm -hmm. that we wanted it to be, but it it certainly, in its own merit, was a cool exercise. Okay. Um, so, but tough luck. Any of well, us I, yeah, get apparently to see it? somebody got in touch with the director and was okay. able to get a copy of it. I don't even think I have a copy. <laughs> okay. To be perfectly honest with you, uh, I don't. Okay. Yeah. And okay. no, you know what? I lied. I do. A fan <laughs> sent me a copy. Oh man. But that's how you get copies. Yeah. you got to get to know the fans. Clearly, yeah. you have no in with the fans. Well, maybe after this interview, someone will say, here, here, here <laughs> Clearly, you go. the fans don't listen to you guys at all. <laughs> it's, apparently, it's just the actors who go on your site to find out what's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Man. We um, didn't get to talk about... We, well, I, I, the main thing that I wanted to talk with you about last year, when dragging you into the interview room, you know, with, with not, no hair and makeup done, anything like that, you know, the USO tour. 
very special. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. But we didn't get to talk about uh, Stargate Continuum. Mm -hmm. What an experience that must have been. And I know that you guys have talked about the Arctic again and again and again. But I'm going to make you again. I know. I have um, no problem talking about it. We actually just uh, talked to Barry Campbell Martin. And yeah. I, uh, Isn't he a great he left guy? Me, he left me a message from the Atlas Camp. Yes. And so I called the sat phone. <laughs> and I got the command center. Um, and it was the day that we had arrived two years ago. It was March 23rd. Oh. Was it just and coincidence or did you just want to... No, it was, he, he, he'd called and left a message, and I was like, let's call him today. Uh, this is the day we got up there. And so I got the, got the sad phone, got the Apple's count. Exactly. Uh, command center. <laughs> and I said, uh, uh, it's Amanda Tappan calling for Barry Campbell. Is he around? He happened to be in the command hut, which was... Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. I said, hey, Barry, it's Amanda. I put him on speakerphone. And Martin, hello. Uh, yeah, he's like, oh, it's so wimpy here. I thank you. Um, it's so it's only minus thirty here. I'm like, oh, you wimps, minus thirty. <laughs> we shot lower we shot than minus that. 58. The first day that you got there, that long shot coming yeah. in with the sun in the background, wasn't that like minus fifty or something? Martin minus said. Minus fifty-eight. Yeah. You know, I can't. Fond memories thinking back on that experience. We, absolutely, yeah. from the word go. Yeah. Absolutely, it was one of those experiences where you had to a hundred percent embrace it. Otherwise, you're a creep. Like, it was like, don't be a jerk. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Mm -hmm. You are going to live on a moving ice flow right, in a camp in the middle of the Arctic Ocean. Like, you're going to see a nuclear submarine crash through the ice, and you're going to get to go on the nuclear yeah. submarine. And the whole time, you're filming a movie. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do that uh -huh. until continuum, too. <laughs> like, come on. It was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> ben and I were walking along doing that huge helicopter shot. Yeah. And we were like, oh my god. Oh, mm -hmm. No nobody has ever walked here before. This is frozen ocean. And, and no nobody will ever, will walk, ever there walk here again. Mm. And then, you know, it turned out we were we got the Guinness Book of Records for the furthest north film shoot ever in the history of, and that's cool. You think that National Geographic would have done something would have like done that. Something, but no, it's Stargate freaking continuum. <laughs> Stargate and their Stargate and their darn Guinness <laughs> World Records. Um yeah, it's, it, it, was, uh, it was magical. I mean, everything, even, you know, one night before filming, you, you, there's no showers up there. So, uh -huh. you know, it's like wipes and... Uh -huh. But I had to wash my hair because we were filming the next day and it was just like I had to. Yeah. And so Brenda, our hairdresser, we filled this Hudson sprayer with warm water off the stove. Like you go into the kitchen, you boil it, and you get ice and you fill it up with ice so that it reaches the right temperature and you pump it and then you spray. Yeah. <laughs> I just led the camera, here I am. Um, even that, we were just like, we just kept pinching ourselves. I kept a journal, and I actually read the journal after I talked to Barry. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, man. Like, the flight over, and that moment of release where you sort of go, okay, here we go. We didn't know what to expect. Way overpacked, but, you know, you have to be prepared right. for everything. Um, that We had such a small, amazing crew. It was just everything about it was special. Brenda and I were just talking about it in the trailer, who did, Brenda who did hair and makeup. <laughs> and uh, we were just talking about it today in the makeup trailer. I mean, that's how profound the experience. Two years later, we're still, remember when? Yeah, when you were getting the briefing and people like CJ said, no, not for me. Right. Was there ever a part of you that said, that asked yourself, am I capable of, of yes. actually doing this? It's like, a, it's like a walkabout, you know, you're finding yourself. Absolutely. And it's a huge, you, you, it's a bit of a soul search because it seemed like a good idea. Oh, yeah. Let's I mean, go to hey. the Arctic and film a movie, yeah. right? And it's, it's, and it's exciting. It's life and death, though. And then all of a sudden you're in this briefing and you go, oh, crap. You die. This is way more serious than I thought. This is, ooh. And afterwards I remember going home to Alan and saying, wow, you know, like, there's really... We can fall through the act. There's polar bears, They're like for real, and they mm -hmm. see us as upright seals. I'm a meal. And, you know, all of the different elements that were described as a frostbite. And, uh -huh. and then when you get up there, and after about 18 hours in the camp, you're so comfortable. I mean, for sure, you're still scanning the horizon uh -huh. for polar bears, and you're still very aware of checking each other. Like, Ben and I were frostbite buddies when we mm -hmm. were filming, mm -hmm. um, just to check each other. You're very aware of that. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> You're very aware of that, but um, you get so comfortable. You figure everything out. Like the first night I had my pack on the floor, everything froze. My toothpaste, my wipes, everything was frozen. My boots were frozen. 
and then you realize, okay, you've got, at night you've got to pull everything up off the floor because it's just so cold. Mm -hmm. And before you go for breakfast, you stick hot shots in your boots and you stick them on your bunk. So by the time you come back from breakfast, you can put your boots on and they're warm. Wow. Like all the little tricks that by day three, you're like old pro. You've been doing it. It's like <laughs> you've shots, never hot. been anywhere like you, else. Yeah. And then coming back to civilization is like this weird sort of, oh, oh. it's so loud in Anchorage. <laughs> <laughs> But you get wow, to go home and barrel! Baby. Yeah, well, I left the day that Olivia turned two. I remember emailing you back and forth and saying, "Are we going to be able to interview?" And I'm like, "No, I need to spend this time with my kid." Yeah, because you never know. Yeah, anything can happen. That's yeah. why no one shoots up that far north. Exactly, exactly. So. But it turned out to be just a phenomenal experience. We got to see the film with you for the first yeah, time yeah. in the theater. Yeah. Um, what a honor! What a great experience that was. That was fun. What did that you think fun. of the final product? I loved it. I loved it. It was interesting because the Arctic stuff, I was like, that's it? I left out and that was it? That's all the movie. And yet, and sometimes I was like, wow, this is, so I thought the Arctic stuff kind of went on for a bit too long, and then by the same token, when it was over, I was like, oh, oh, that's over. Well, it's but I think the film, the film brought everything in. Yeah. You know, there was a really good heartfelt story in, at the center of it all. Um, the, the vis effects blew me away. The, the budget that they had it? Oh, man. Holy moly. I mean, that, it looked amazing. Mm -hmm. And we actually got to see the film again in San Diego at Comic-Con. I was there too. On, yes, <laughs> on an aircraft carrier, That's which right. was... Huge. Oh, it's ridiculous. Mm. It's a ridiculous experience. And fans, which was very cool, like 150 fans were there. That was awesome to be able to watch the movie with them. Mm -hmm. um, but you're sitting on an aircraft carrier in the middle of San Diego Harbor, mm -hmm. and the film is up on, in your... I know. What the... Yeah. Pinch me! <laughs> the koosh is so big it blew out the speakers in the front. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was amazing. It was oh, an amazing man. experience. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, it just the people that were in it and to have Don there. And it was really special. Yeah. Very special. You guys just started back filming season two. Yeah. This past week. Uh huh. What should fans be excited about for this season? And what should viewers who are going to be turning in for the first time this fall be looking forward to the most? Loaded question, Amanda. Go. It's a bit intense of a question there, my friend. Um, fans should be looking forward to... We ended on a really, like something really insane I finished our first season. So obviously the conclusion to that, which is a big two-parter. And uh, like I said before, Martin's been, been watching the, uh, the rough assembly of the scene so far. And it's it's bigger and faster and slicker than what we did last year. So I'm I'm excited by that. Um, the conclusion to what happens is pretty intense, and the subsequent fallout from that, um, me, like like we talked about before, meeting more creatures in the sanctuary mm -hmm. and from different sanctuaries, um, and more edge to our characters. I mean, things a lot of things happen to them in the first few episodes and. It'll carry through the season. Yeah, Damien just told us, you know, that um, you guys are going to be taking some risks with, like, the, the nature of, of, of how the characters, um, like, not necessarily everyone is safe. I mean, the last shot in, in this, the, the first season, you know. Oh my God. We're taking what's a lot of risks. With Ashley, what yeah. are they going to do with that? Yeah. So. We're taking some risks. Yeah. Um, for all the characters. Okay. You know, in terms of what their journeys are, we're taking risks. Mm -hmm. Bring it, bring um, it. And showing a darker side. No respect, Damien Kindler. Seriously. He's like, he's like a kid. Truth be told, you interrupted his interview with yeah. Martin Wood <laughs> last time we were here. Whatever. Thank you, David. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he's my best friend. I love him. Um, yeah. Yeah, everyone... Everyone has something pretty intense to go through this season. Can I ask for when we're premiering? Mm -hmm. uh, like, fall. I, I, fall. Okay, that's, that's all I'm allowed to say. Because mm -hmm. we don't actually. Yeah. I thought I had an exact date, and I actually said that in an interview. And then Simon oh. said, "No, we don't know for sure if that's yeah. the exact date." And I said, "Oh, okay, so fall." Yeah. Two thousand and nine. How's Olivia? She's awesome. Olivia's awesome. She just turned four. Wow. Oh. Really? Yeah. Is that wow. Olivia in the opening? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? $200,000 question. It is. Uh, uh, we actually had a situation where we, we, they wanted to show uh, a bit of the history uh -huh. um, of Helen and Ashley. And so there was talk about hiring a little girl and doing a photo session with her. And 
And then Martin looked at me and said, your Come daughter on. looks just like a young Amelia. What, why? And I said, yeah. How do you, and he said, how do you feel? And I said, well, but it's kind of cool. It's a cool thing for her. You know, oh, I was that little kid in the opening of my mom's show. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a friend of mine took the photo, and I happened to have it. It's a great shot. And so I showed it to the people at, at Pure in New York who were doing our opening title sequence, who are awesome. Yeah. And they said, yeah, this is great. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my friend Karen Lehner, who's one of the trustees of the Waterkeeper Alliance, which is yes. one of the charities that I'm heavily involved with, uh, she took that picture. And, um, and it's in the opening. And I phoned Karen, can we use your picture? <laughs> um, yeah. Five dollars an episode. No, she's <laughs> awesome. She was like, yeah, absolutely. So that is my daughter, Olivia. Would you be opposed to her at some point playing or appearing as a younger version of Ashley? We've actually talked about that. Uh, it makes I sense. I don't know. It does make sense. I don't know. Okay. I, she's a, she is, uh, she's going to be a better actress than I could ever hope to be. I mean, she's already amazing at four. She does accents and she She thinks that's something that she'll pursue when she gets older. Follow I, after I'm mom. Sadly, I do. I really yeah. actually do. She's, yeah, she's natural. So yeah. uh, who knows? But I, I'm not pushing it at all. I'm not mm -hmm. going to be one of those moms who goes, go get the Crest commercial. <laughs> um, no, I'm not going to push it. But we'll see. I'm open to anything. Sweet. That's great. Yeah. For those fans who may not quite be sold on Sanctuary after what? season one. I don't know if any exist. I don't know if any exist. But I think you're crazy. Theoretically speaking. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. What would you say season two is going to do that season one maybe did not quite accomplish? I think it's going to bring the edge back that the webisodes have. Mm. Uh, it's, it's edgier, it's slicker, our, we have more money for vis effects this year. Um, so, I mean, I think already our effects were mind-blowing. Um, but th there's even more money in the budget for that this year. Um, and once, you know, we started off with so little time to, to roll out our first season. We were literally getting scripts the week before. We've had a bit more time to, to at least assemble scripts. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a lot more thought into how the season flows out. And Catch your breath a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, having mm -hmm. said that, we had three and a half weeks to prep a huge two-parter, which was not enough time. But um, I, I, I just think, like, the, I think it's a cool show. I'm really proud of this show, and I'm proud of the fact that it's, it's coming from a place as small as it is and being as big as it is. And, and I think Damien's an amazing writer, and he's, he's, all the scripts are going through his typewriter at the end, and so it's going to have more of a singular vision than it did last year. And I think, um, you know, Martin is going to be directing at least half of them again this year, maybe a bit less, but mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got a great roster of directors, of which I will be one. <laughs> I will You're consider myself one direct. of the great directors. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be a director. Yeah, I think I'm doing episode six. It's about time. Uh, but we That's have, you know, we have, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I, I, I'm nervous about directing this. I mean, Stargate, I was really nervous about directing, but this is like, that's way too many hats. That's a lot of balls in the air. But just like you said for Stargate, you're not, everyone is behind you 100%. Yeah, absolutely. You have a great team. You have team. a net underneath you. I mean, not, I mean, not, no, not absolutely. Like the, I do have a safety net. Yeah. If I fall flat on my face, there's somebody there to grab my collar. And but they all back believe up. in you. Yeah. You know? Just so, like uh, but anyway, that, it, um, I, I, do, I don't know. I'm really proud of this team. I'm really proud. I'm really proud of, of Martin, and I'm really proud of Damien, and I'm proud of the team that we've assembled here. And I think the show we're making is, is, is going to be better than last year. Mm -hmm. As it, Robin expressed the fact that because of the web series two years ago, it feels almost like starting a third season instead of a second season. In some ways. Does yeah. the character of Helen Magnus, is, are you getting to the point where she feels a bit more lived in? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting. I was talking to Martin about the fact that, you know, we were talking about Helen, and there's a weight to her. There's a gravitas because mm -hmm. of her age and because of what she's experienced. Mm -hmm. And I started to feel that buzz as the season was starting, and I went, mm -hmm. oh, why am I feeling so heavy? Why am I, what is this, you know, I should be so elated and excited. We're about well, to start the season. And then I went, oh, I've got, I've got Magnus in me. Like, uh -huh. Magnus has arrived. Here she mm -hmm. is. <laughs> But like and you said in Joseph Malazzi's blog, you have once you go home, you have to turn her off absolutely. because it's family time. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So. Joe, Joe would, did gave me a great gift there. That was that was a treat to do that Q and A. That was really fun. Yeah. yeah. You are wearing the hat of executive producer, unlike you did on Stargate. You know, and John and and Rob and Brad would would 
run through the hoops with the networks, and now you kind of have to do that mm -hmm. with, with sci-fi. Yeah. Are you, is that teaching you a lot of lessons? Are you having a great deal of re more respect for those? Not, not that you didn't have before, but oh, I have a huge amount of respect for them. for them. Yeah, and in fact, <laughs> I went up to Brad uh, and Rob uh, and Joe. I think, How do you uh, do it? Well, and just said, I'm sorry for every stupid question I ever came into your office and asked you when I was an actor. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, I get the, you're constantly barraged with questions, and you are dealing with a lot of different factors. I mean, on Stargate, it was MGM, it was sci-fi, it was the Canadian network, it was, you know, plus the production, plus the cast, mm -hmm. plus the crew, plus everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. So you're, and you're writing scripts, and you're dealing How the with the creative. How do you get it all done? Yeah. And your post-production and your pre-production. So, uh, yeah, I, I always had a huge amount of respect for them. I just don't think I quite understood what they did, mm -hmm. at the full extent of what they did. And now I do, and I go, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, the phone calls alone, the fact that, that I don't think Martin, Damien, and I ever really get lunch, because we're always on a call with the network, or we're on a conference call with somebody about something, or we're having a concept meeting, or a meeting with a department head about you know, the next episode, there's never a break. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I have, I have a lot of respect for no. yeah. executive producers. And less respect for actors, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, Chris, shut up. Get over there and work. We pay your bills. Damn it. <laughs> no, we have a great cast, so that's cool. That's cool. What else is 2009 bringing for Amanda Tapping? Your well, charities, Sanctuary, you, know, you mentioned Waterkeeper. Uh, yeah, I've... I, I, I've uh, Apparently the Board of Trustees is going to invite me to become a member, uh, or uh, a board member uh, for the Water Keepers. It's an organization that's hugely important to me, so I'll be doing work with them. Um, we finished shooting our season in July and then we're in post-production. Uh, I've been offered a film that would shoot in early, late summer, early fall called Water's Edge, um, which I'm excited about. And then the Stargate movie is potentially happening late fall. Yes. Is what I'm hearing. Can you give us an, an update on that? Are you planning yeah. on uh, expecting to do both the SG-1 and the Atlantis movies when they happen? To do. Yeah. I know for sure I want to do the, uh, I will be doing the SG-1 movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Atlantis, Joe had, had mentioned the possibility of a cameo, but until mm -hmm. I am sitting on the set drinking tea with the crew. Mm -hmm. Blonde it's not wig real. the entire time, or do you think No, I think Sam for that point, what hair? I did, yeah, I think what, no, what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll lighten it up somewhat oh, okay. for Sam. Okay. I think There's the no wig doesn't really she... work. And, it's, and in a film, when you're that close and mm -hmm. it's that big, I just would not feel comfortable being in a wig. Mm -hmm. I think it needs, to, so, I mean, I get a, I finished Helen Magnus. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna look like for the film in between, but, um, I think in, in all likelihood I might cut my hair a little bit and, uh, and go a bit lighter. I won't go back to pure blonde because it's too hard to yeah. go back and forth, but I, I'll go lighter for sure. Very cool. Yeah. Are you happy with the, the, the dark hair? I, I mean, you know what? I love it. I went lighter through the hiatus. Oh, you did? Um, a little bit. It's like the roots are lighter. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my blonde roots are showing. Crap. Um, and it's interesting when you do get really dark hair, if you're not used to it, you sort of feel like... <laughs> like you feel a little sad at first oh. and every time I look in the mirror I'm like oh. but then there's a part that makes me feel kind of sexy you can good. tell by the way I'm sitting no I saw you uh, for the first the time the on the uh, on the midway and it was like wow yeah you know I it's a I totally was different a, feeling to it when I first heard that you were going dark it was like I no I don't think so yeah. and then it was yeah it works yeah, it I'm really lucky does. I could, I could, I could. especially if you can wear this outfit around all the time yeah <laughs> hello yeah. <laughs> it's pretty sharp, man. Thank you. You were standing next to me earlier. I could smell the leather off. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So not... Um, so busy. That, that takes yeah. me pretty much till Christmas. And I'm doing a few convention appearances. And I'll be doing Gabbett again in England mm -hmm. in November. Um, yeah. Praying that the movie and Gabbett work out. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and raising some money there for water keepers and for the okay. hearing dogs again. So, yeah, I'm busy. And I'm starting... Did I say I'm starting a charitable foundation? I'm starting a, a non-for-profit organization this year. For? Um, Sanctuary for Kids. It's a... Uh, really? Well, I don't know if that's the official name yet, but the idea is that it, w it will be working with a bunch of smaller charities for children. Um, Camel, who runs my website, uh, was recently in Nepal and worked with the um, Nepal Orphan Fund and, uh. and worked at an orphanage. And... Uh, it just him coming back so inspired. It was like, well, there's a charity that probably doesn't get a lot of funding because not a lot of people have access to Nepal and what's going on there. And so 
unless it's in front of people's eyes, they don't, you know, it's not something that they think about. So that's definitely something that we'll be, we'll be raising money for. And um, so, you know, so far, as it's rolling out, I'm getting a lot of support. So, so the idea is an organization that helps get funds to it's other organizations? It's a not-for-profit organization that, that will, yeah, it's basically just a funnel. I will raise mm -hmm. money and, and through different events, and, um, and then that money will be dispersed around the world to smaller charities. The, the ultimate idea for Camel and I is to have the website as a connective tissue for people who, you know, you, for example, may know of a really great charity in your area, mm -hmm. right into the website and say, you know, if you're in the New Jersey area, mm -hmm. this is, this is a, a great organization mm -hmm. and this is, and so people hear about smaller organizations, I mean, we all know about the big ones and they get a huge amount of press as they should, but the smaller ones don't often, and they exactly. often, and in this, in this current economic climate, yeah. the chances of those smaller charities raising the kind of money that they need to raise, which is part of what precipitated this, was it, it becomes impossible. Funding is impossible. And so um, if I can in a small way help, I mean, in Nepal, for example, $80 helps one girl for a year. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer. What you did with the Montessori? Well, we, I, I was blown away. Was, we raised yeah. like twenty-five thousand dollars. That was crazy, and that was the template. That was the the idea in doing that mm -hmm. was as a template for fundraising for other organizations. Mm -hmm. And so now it looks like it'll be a not-for-profit organization, and we'll we'll fan out. But it's the idea of of letting people know about the smaller charities and and giving people an opportunity to come to us and say this is you know and 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 for the fans to interact on a different level. You know, I, hey, I'm in Australia, and I I, I run a small charity that that um, gets used baby clothing for mothers who don't have a lot of money. Hey, I'm in Britain, and I do the same thing. And oh, hey, I'm in South Africa, and I do the same thing. And what kind of resources? And maybe people can start talking that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, so it's it's just a connective tissue. Is the idea that Camel and I have have kind of talked about, and uh, and I'm working with um, with a woman, Jill Bodie, who's helping me roll out the not-for-profit idea. So very cool. It's very so your cool. plate yeah. is kind of full for the a little next bit full. Year. So I guess I Plus could ask you out for dinner. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, and of course at the top of that whole big pyramid of stuff is you know Alan and Olivia. So. Yeah. And George, the dog. And George, how big is George now? He's 110 pounds. <laughs> oh, the boothie. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He's like almost three times the size of Olivia. Sweet. Yeah, he's a good boy. I bet he's just a love. I mean, see, you know the, those. I know kids, young kids, who have big dogs in their lives, and then little dogs come. Oh my God, the little dog! It's gonna yeah, freak me. Freaks it's out by little dog. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Hello, Ooh. big dog. She's like, hey, how's it going? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's cute. Great. Yay! Thank you, Amanda. Thank, thank you, you, and thank you. <laughs>